Welcome to Beginnings, Throw at Commencement. Kareen Smith here. Over the years, I have heard a few commencement speakers use a quote or two from Henry David Thoreau to inspire their audiences. And after a while, I wondered, could we cobble together a commencement speech made up entirely of Thoreau quotes? Well, as it turns out, yes, we can. What follows is a speech that Thoreau never delivered himself, although nearly all of the writing is indeed his. A few new transitions have been added and they appear here in brown italics. Be prepared to be motivated. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Thoreau. Thank you for inviting me to speak on this occasion. As some of you may know, I am not without opinions about the kinds of experiments you are about to launch at this time in your lives. Here are a few thoughts to accompany you on your own journeys. It is remarkable how easily and insensibly we fall into a particular route and make a beaten track for ourselves. Not till we are lost, in other words, not till we have lost the world, do we begin to find ourselves and realize where we are and the infinite extent of our relations. Perhaps you have heard of a particular endeavor which I once embarked upon. I lived alone in the woods, a mile from any neighbor, in a house which I had built myself on the shore of Walden Pond in Concord, Massachusetts, and earned my living by the labor of my hands only. I lived there two years and two months. At present, I am a sojourner in civilized life again. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I did not wish to live what was not life, living is so dear, nor did I wish to practice resignation unless it was quite necessary. I wanted to live deep and suck out all the marrow of life. It is worth the while to have lived a primitive wilderness life at some time, to know what are, after all, the necessities of life and what methods society has taken to supply them. I had three chairs in my house, one for solitude, two for friendship, three for society. I thrive best on solitude. If I have had a companion only one day in a week, unless it were one or two I could name, I find that the value of the week to me has been seriously affected. It dissipates my days, and often it takes me another week to get over it. I maintained myself thus solely by the labor of my hands, and I found that by working about six weeks in a year, I could meet all the expenses of living. My retreat also gave me the chance to write, to think, and to question. Why should we live with such hurry and waste of life? We are determined to be starved before we are hungry. The mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. What is called resignation is confirmed desperation. From the desperate city, you go into the desperate country and have to console yourself with the bravery of minks and muskrats. Why should we be in such desperate haste to succeed and in such desperate enterprises? If a man does not keep pace with his companions, perhaps it is because he hears a different drummer. Let him step to the music which he hears, however measured or far away. I am convinced both by faith and experience that to maintain oneself on this earth is not a hardship, but a pastime, if we will live simply and wisely. Let not to get a living be thy trade, but thy sport. Rather than love, than money, than fame, give me truth. I do believe in simplicity. It is astonishing, as well as sad, how many trivial affairs even the wisest man thinks he must attend to in a day, how singular an affair he thinks he must omit. When the mathematician would solve a difficult problem, he first frees the equation of all encumbrances, and reduces it to its simplest terms. 
So simplify the problems of life. Distinguish the necessary and the real. Probe the earth to see where your main roots run. If one listens to the faintest but constant suggestions of his genius, which are certainly true, he sees not to what extremes or even insanity it may lead him. And yet that way, as he grows more resolute and faithful, his road lies. If the day and the night are such that you greet them with joy and life emits a fragrance like flowers and sweet scented herbs is more elastic, more starry, more immortal, that is your success. All nature is your congratulation and you have cause momentarily to bless yourself. I left the woods for as good a reason as I went there. Perhaps it seemed to me that I had several more lives to live. I could not spare any more time for that one. I learned this, at least by my experiment, that if one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams and endeavors to live the life which he has imagined, he will meet with a success unexpected in common hours. I would not have anyone adopt my mode of living on any account. I desire that there may be as many different persons in the world as possible. But I would have each one be very careful to find out and pursue his own way and not his father's or his mother's or his neighbor's instead. The youth may build or plant or sail, only let him not be hindered from doing that which he tells me he would like to do. For more than a decade, you have participated in and perhaps have even learned from an educational system. I ask, what does education often do? It makes a straight cut ditch of a free meandering brook. Today marks the opportunity to break through these banks of rock and clay and to begin to flow where your own waters will lead you. Now or never, you must live in the present, launch yourself on every wave, find your eternity in each moment. Fools stand on their island opportunities and look toward another land. There is no other land. There is no other life but this or the like of this. Take any other course and life will be a succession of regrets. Let us see vessels sailing prosperously before the wind and not simply stranded barks. There is no world for the penitent and regretful. Be the Lewis and Clark of your own streams and oceans. Explore your own higher latitudes with shiploads of preserved meats to support you if they be necessary and pile the empty cans sky high for a sign. Were preserved meats invented to preserve meat merely? Nay, be a Columbus to whole new continents and worlds within you, opening new channels, not of trade, but of thought. Start now on that farthest Western way, which does not pause at the Mississippi or the Pacific, nor conduct toward a worn out China or Japan but leads on direct a tangent to this sphere, summer and winter, day and night, sundown, moon down, and at last, earth down too. If there's an experiment which you would like to try, try it. Do not entertain doubts if they are not agreeable to you. Remember that you need not eat unless you are hungry. Do what nobody else can do for you. Omit to do anything else. If you have built castles in the air, your work need not be lost. That is where they should be. Now put the foundations under them. The universe is wider than our views of it, and this world is but canvas to our imaginations. Thank you. No, thank you, Henry. And many thanks also to my friends, Jackie, Lorraine, Randy, Henrik, Tammy, Richard, Sandy, Bob, for their help and support in the creation of this program. And also thanks to artist Elena D. Cade Gilder for her posthumous contribution. This program was written, produced, and narrated by Corrine H. Smith. Thank you very much for watching.